this is Roshan Jaswal, CEO and co-founder of Insured Mind, and you are listening to 30 Minutes with Insurance CEO Podcast, the show that is designed to inspire growth and impact so you can create the best version of your agency by learning from the insurance agency CEOs and the owners. Um, today, we are talking about how you start, build, grow an agency with Jackson Rollo. President of Roller Insurance. He's a second generation agency owner. And before we uh, talking over like how he took over this agency and he worked as a producer and the director of sales. And right before this conversation, we were just talking about the second generation agency owner and what it is like. So let's welcome Jackson. Welcome Jackson today to the podcast. Hey, man, thank you so much. I, I appreciate it. As always, good to get to catch up with you and uh, look forward to our 30 minutes today. Perfect. Thank you. Well, let's start with a quick uh, couple of icebreakers. You know, what do you have for breakfast in the morning? Oh, no breakfast. Uh, I don't do oh, breakfast. Boy. Yeah, I know. O- only on the weekends during the weekdays, just uh, two cups of coffee. I-, I enjoy the first one. My wife, we do we do some stuff, uh, Bible reading in the morning and then uh, get the second one on the way out the door and uh, usually have meetings starting from there, you know, till the end of the day. So no breakfast, oh. but uh, it- it's uh, just coffee. <laughs> And there, there is some commonality, you know, just the previous episode I um, I recorded, you know, it's also with the second generation uh, agency owner, same answer. I don't do breakfast. I just do coffee. And, you know, I don't know, man, what's going on here? It's we'll terrible. I'm more. sure it's terrible for my health, <laughs> but uh, yeah. <laughs> All right. So how would you define your agency? Uh, like what segment, what market, PNC, commercial life and health? So just paint a picture of what your agency size and uh, segments? Yeah, so you know we are. Uh, I would say we're, we're PNC generalists is kind of where we play. Uh, we do a lot in the we do some in the life and health in the group life and health space. But but where we're really good is we're really good at being local. Um, one of our our main focuses is on specializing in a local community. Um, you know, all of our producers in our offices. We have sixty two offices right now in six states. Um, all of our producers and staff they live in the communities where they serve and they work. And so we specialize on being local, which means we're going to have to write the home, the auto, the commercial, the life, the health. Um, I know some people kind of look at that as a, a negative, but for us, it's our positive, right? I always tell people, hey, let everyone else specialize in an industry. We're going to specialize in the people we work with. And by working on them and focusing on them, I think it's going to give us a competitive advantage because, you know, people don't buy products. They buy they buy people they like. Uh, and, and especially in our business, you know, we, we sell a lot of different products. We represent a lot of different great companies. So, uh, you know, if all we had at our disposal was the price of the quote or the company we work with, uh, we would, you know, be really limiting ourselves. So we try to be really, really good at specializing in the people we serve, building great plans, risk, uh, you know, mitigating plans for their personal or their commercial life. And then, you know, advancing those as time goes on as their risk profile changes, as their situations change you know, we can build a plan that's tailored to all the stages of their life. Man, what you're sharing is so much wisdom. And usually I would assume all this wisdom comes with a lot of gray hair. But, but you know, this <laughs> Maybe young we have some. And, <laughs> oh, no. Hopefully no, no this gray is fantastic. hair. No, this is fantastic that, you know, in this early of your career, you are able to identify and move beyond looking at the bottom line. You're looking at, you know, that long term scalability of business, which is around people. Fantastic to hear that. So, you know, talk to me a little bit about your journey and your agency, you know, and how you got to this point, um, transitions and everything. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for for allowing me to share because I'll tell you this is something I'm I'm pretty passionate about. Uh, I, I'm I'm blessed beyond a lot of people in the world. You know, the uh, good Lord has 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 uh, really uh, taken care of me. But uh, second generation agency, as you mentioned, my dad started it in 2000. Um, he started it kind of through a crazy situation. My grandpa ran track at Baylor. One of the guys he ran track with owned banks. In 2000, they passed the Graham Leach Bliley Act, where banks could own agencies. And uh, my dad was a first year guy at Farm Bureau in 1999, and decided to go independent and open an agency for these banks. Uh, 2004, he bought out the bank out of their share because the bank sold, and uh, went fully independent with Rollo Insurance Group at that point in 2004. And then from 2004 to 2020, 19, about whenever I joined, about five years ago now, just really, you know, focused on on, on uh, people and on growth with the right kind of people. So growing 
from one office in a small uh, t- town uh, right outside of Dallas uh, to I think we were about 12 to 15 offices whenever I joined in 2019. So uh, a lot of growth, a lot of foundation being laid at that point. Um, and uh, so I joined in 2019. Uh, my plan was always to go to law school. I graduated from Texas A&M in two years. And I had a year break between when I was going to you know, go to law school or graduate from A&M and law school. I had a year break uh, to take LSAT and do some things like that. So, you know, how everyone else gets into insurance, I kind of fell into it. So it's funny because people always just assume I'm, you know, I, I know about insurance because I grew up around it. But to be honest, man, I, I didn't really want anything to do with insurance. I always heard my parents talking about it on the car on the way to basketball tournaments and just kind of ignored it because it sounded, you know, foreign to me. I didn't understand any of the language, so I just kind of ignored it all. And uh, so graduating college, uh, my dad said, hey, you know, I'm, I was getting married. I was like, oh, I got to have a job. got to make some money. My dad was like, hey, come sell a little bit of insurance. And, man, I just fell in love with it. I fell in love with waking up every day, you know, eight to nine o'clock drinking coffee watching sports center making money because docu signs were hitting my email inbox and then going after the day and grinding it out whether that was cold calling or you know client meetings or whatever it might be uh also played a lot more golf back then so i had a lot better tan you know back when 2019 when i was just producing but uh so i produced for for about two and a half years um i took over as director of sales in 2020 which is a lot of fun i was a uh, uh, six months post-graduation six months in the insurance business and taking over as director of sales at 20 22 years old uh wow crazy man and all that happened during covid like covid hit like four yep. months into my journey so had to really learn a lot of things really quickly change a lot of my my approach to things and, and I, I think it honestly helped me grow up quite a bit um just because I, I had a lot of responsibility a lot of people who i was in charge of leading who were much older than i was so had to find a way to get their respect uh and, and the easiest way that i did that was i sat down with them and i said hey what do you, uh, three questions. We had a three question interview with every single agent we had. What do you love about Rollo Insurance? What do you hate about Rollo Insurance? And if you were me, what would you change? They all gave me all kind of feedback on all three of those. And uh, we, we really honed in on what, what they loved, which is obviously what we were good at. We fixed a lot of what they hated and the things that they would do, you know, that they would have put into place. I said, hey, perfect. I built a spreadsheet and we just started highlighting, you know, columns and rows green based on achieving and, mm-hmm. and fi- making fixes for the things that they had ideas of. And so just really trying to show them, Mike, I'm here to serve you. And so I did that for two years, and then I took over as president. Uh, uh, when I was 24. It was January of 2022. Uh, so I've been in that role for about a little over two years now. Wow. You know, if I were a listener right now, I'll pause and rewind this whole thing at least a couple more times. This is this is classic, you know, of what you're saying. You know, at, a, at this age of what you are sharing, Jackson, this is this is wisdom. And I don't know how you got here so quickly, you know, but if there is one word that comes to my mind right now about what I'm listening is hope. You know, there is a lot of, like people have literally written off independent agency channel of agents, you know, hey, this is the agent community. You know, people are just all 55 and above. Man, looking at you, listening to you, you know, this tells me just about one thing. It is hope. Yeah, you know, I will tell you that uh, I... I'm blessed to have have my dad, who's who's still our CEO. Um, a lot of the advice he gives me, the mentor. I mean, you know, we'll we'll, we'll butt heads from time to time, but uh, he, course. you know, he he he's really you know mentoring and grooming me. Um, and, and I'm blessed too. We got a great C-suite team and a leadership team. Our average age on our C-suite's like 45. Our average age on our, our leadership teams are like 35. Um, mm-hmm. And I tell everybody all the time, I'm the young guy. I'm the one that runs fast. My job's to make sure that we go 100 miles an hour. It's their job to keep us in the lines and heading in the yep, right direction, yep. right? So we all have a we all have our role. We're blessed with a great team here, and I think a lot of that has helped, you know, uh, help motivate and push me. But I've always been a competitor. I mean, I, I love basketball. Growing up, I tried to play it in college for for way too long. I should have quit a little bit earlier than I did. Uh, but uh, no. I, man, I'm a competitor, and I think a, a lot of that is what kind of drives me to. Um, help this agency continue and grow for the better. Because like you said, our industry, you know, there's a lot of people leaving it here in the next 10 years. Mm -hmm. Um, And I do think that, uh, you know, technology is changing rapidly. I mean, look at you guys, right? And the the benefit you bring to the independent channel. Uh, I know big partner and believer uh, with with you guys in Insured Mind. And so just, I think that, you know, there's things that we can do to continue to progress this industry. But we can't ever forget that this industry is built on one thing, and that's relationships. Uh, the farther we get away from that, the more commoditized and the and the worse our industry is going to be to the consumer in the eye of the consumer. Yep. We have to focus in on those relationships because 
I mean, there's one thing that being independent means. It means I have options and it means I'm an advisor now because I work for the client, not the company. And we got to keep that at the center of everything we do as an industry. Do you think that essence is getting lost somewhere? It is becoming a lot more transaction and even the agencies are kind of treating it that way. Yeah, I think some do. Um, you know, I, I still I still think that, like you said, there is a lot of hope. There's a lot of agencies out there doing it the right way. We got a lot of people that, that you know, that, that I see that are doing it the right way. Hopefully we are, too. But um, I think that that some people lose the the relationship they they focus too much on the transaction um and it's hard to do it's hard it's hard to focus on the relationship in a market like this right you know you wake up every morning there's 45 renewals all 45 went up 30 percent. everybody wants to be requoted everybody's calling in 90 days before the renewal there's a lot going on and it's hard sometimes to build out a process and to balance process technology and efficiency with relationship and empathy and those kind of things. So you have to find a balance, but everything in life is balanced, you know? Yeah. So it's, it's just about finding that balance as we, as we move forward and we progress our industry and we innovate and we change and we develop more efficient processes to not lose the things that make us uh, such a special industry in the first place. Man. Well, I, I don't want to rush into all the business yet. I know there's a lot more to unfold. I, I want to stick to your story. I want to still want to know a little bit more about you. So let, let's stick to that. And you mentioned already that, you know, you would have gone to law school. You know, so if no, if you would not have done insurance, you would have been an attorney by now. Yep, but I think I would have probably just graduated from law school last summer. So. Uh, well, congratulations! <laughs> not much of a so, not much of an attorney yet, but maybe. Yes, um, yeah, you'll go to the bar test, and hopefully you would crack that one. So, talk to me. You know what what was driving inside your head? You know, hey, why I want to do something different, and then ended up being into this black hole, being sucked in. Yeah, you know, I think that uh, the insurance industry is just not very appealing a lot of times because you don't understand it, right? Like, from whenever I right, whenever I got into it, and I was you know three months into it, and I finally started receiving some of those paychecks, I'm like, okay, wait, yeah. now I understand. Now my I started understanding what my parents, the flexibility they had. I mean, my dad, right? He was running a company with sixty employees whenever I was a senior in high school. That's not a small company. I mean, that's that's a yeah. lot of people that you're responsible for. And he was at every one of my basketball games. A lot of my practices, right? Like, how did he have that flexibility? Wow. Well, this industry, right, is how he had that because production and sales allows you to have that flexibility. So um, I think when I understood that, it really it really drew me in. But, you know, the reason for law school, I think, was just because, again, it's one of those industries that is a little more forward facing to a college student, right? Like uh, attorneys, doctors, engineers, those things are just appealing to people. And, and to me, you know, I really like to uh, I like to win. And I like to argue. And so, you know, law school is kind of a natural fit, right? <laughs> Perfect, but, uh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, just trying to find my way to, to be to be oh. a little bit unique. I mean, I was trying to go to Stanford. Uh, you know, I have a buddy who works out at Apple and I studied Mandarin in college. I took uh, four semesters of Mandarin, just try to wow. try to kind of make myself a little bit more uh, appealing to, you know, maybe a law school out, out in, like in California, like Stanford. So just trying to find ways to to. I think I was always built for sales maybe, right? And I think because it's it's relationship based and it's finding ways, unique avenues, wedges, whatever you want to call them to win. And, uh, you know, I learned a lot of that through sports and it just kind of followed right into business, you know? I, I think you were built to lead and you're built to impress. <laughs> I don't know about that. Uh, it probably depends on the day. <laughs> yeah, no, again, this is just in the first 10 minutes, you know, you blew my mind with everything I have learned about you, man. I thought I know enough, but now I, I like, man, he's at a whole different level. So fantastic. <laughs> oh, Thanks man. for sharing that. So, so you mentioned about the flexibility that you have seen with your father that, you know, uh, who could attend so many of your games and, all the extra, and I'm sure that has carried a lot of weight for you, which means you know hey, that is what I want to do as a father, right? You know, yep. with your kid, and you know you want to you want to make sure you are available, you know, because that's also a very important aspect. You know, we always talk about work life balance for within the agency. Yep. So talk to me, you know, because people just get so consumed at work, and that is missed sometimes. Yeah, you know, it's hard. Um... 
I've been focusing a lot of my time lately, actually, on, on the difference in discipline and, motiv- and, and motivation, right? Like motivation comes and goes. And so you're motivated sometimes and sometimes you're not. And so if discipline is doing the same thing over and over and over, no matter how you feel, no matter if you want to or no matter if you don't want to or you have motivation or you, you know, you're lacking it. Uh, and, and that's a big deal for me is because uh, family time is a big deal. I got a daughter who's uh, uh, a year and a half. I got another one on the way here in a few months. Right. Well, My congratulations. wife. Congratulations. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. So life's about to get busy. Uh, but, you know, that's that's the beautiful parts about life. Like that's what it's really about. Right. So we have a phrase we always use at Rollo Insurance. Uh, we're, we're God, family, country type people. And so, you know, God being a big part of, of who most of us are and then family. Right. As well. Family is a big, big, big thing to me. And so uh, I actually have something every day. I, I don't know. You know, one of my challenges to me this year was accountability to myself, to everybody who works here in the company with me and, and people who challenge me and motivate me. So uh, I actually have a little thing every single day. I check off certain activities that I want to accomplish and certain things I want to do. And one of those I call wow. it Q- QFT, and that's quality family time. So I, I actually leave here at five most days, go home at seven or, or from five to seven. And uh, that's my two hours with my daughter, right? That's uh, that's playtime, that's wow. dinner time, that's bath time. Try to turn the phone off uh, as much as possible, and then and then whenever you know my wife, uh, she she's like well, she's entering the third trimester now, so she goes to sleep about nine o'clock. She yeah. goes to sleep. Yeah. I'll whip out oh. the laptop and I'll work for a few more hours, right? But I'm wow. it's too important to me. I'm not going to go home at seven because my daughter she goes to sleep at seven, right? Like I want to spend yes. some time with her. Cause I'm never going to get these moments back. So yeah. I, I agree seeing that through my parents and then, you know, and, and I'll tell you as a company, we push that too. Like as a company, we, we tell people all the time, Hey, you're not going to get moments back with your family. Take those moments, cherish them. Uh, work yeah. will always be here when you get back. And hopefully if you take those moments with your family, you're a little more refreshed, po- positive attitude. You're a little more excited about work when you get back here. Man, that is so important. And it's so precious what you said, you know, and I, I can relate to that story. So a couple, couple pointers I can think of, you know, as it is said, probably around uh, 80%, 75 to 80% of your kids time are before they are teenage. Mm-hmm. So, you know, by the time they become teenage, and if you have not spent that time with them, you know, you just got only 20% left for the rest of the life. Yep, yep so, absolutely. Yeah, a lot of people, you know, it's easy to travel yeah. right now, because they might not remember it. Um but it's 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 important that we kind of balance those things, I think. Yeah. And so, you know, it's it's important. We always talk about work life balance. And I tell people all the time, hey, look, you can work 60 hours a week without working from six to seven every single day. Right. Like there's other yep. times in the day. I'm a night owl. I love uh, basketball season because there's basketball games yeah. on until midnight every day. Uh- yeah. I'll work during those games while I'm watching some basketball on the couch, you know, and, and it, usually there you're you more go. productive in those times. So, well, that's good to know. So let's talk about what has been your biggest challenge for you growing the business. Man, it, I, I think that's a hard question because it's going to change day to day or year to year, right? I, I think that the biggest challenge is all never settling. Um, I'm actually wearing a bracelet right now. We we rolled these things out. Uh, uh, to our agency in January, they're, they're called the Rollo Rules. There are our guidelines right. for our company, so our twelve guidelines, and and we had these uh, these champion bands. And what they are is when somebody champions one of those rules, we we reward them for it. And so rule number four is uh, perfection is impossible. Dream it, chase it. Uh, and following rule rule number four is rule number five, which is the answer is never because we've always done it that way. So uh, not settling for, hey, we've always done it this way, but always looking yeah. and striving after perfection. Look, it's impossible to achieve per- a perfect Rollo insurance. I tell this to everybody, me. It, it never is going to exist. Yeah, yeah. But that doesn't mean we don't dream about what a perfection would look like, and then we chase after it. And then guess what? When you when you reach that destination, you do it again. And so you know, to me, I think the biggest challenge is just keeping the balance of the status quo you know, being really excited when we hit our our mile marks or our goals, or our achievements, or our KPIs, but then getting right back to the grind. So it's so it's balanced to all of that. Again, I think life is hard because sometimes we get out of balance. We either are too happy about small successes or we're too you know uh, too upset about big challenges we might not get to meet. And so to me, it's a balance of all of that and, and keeping ourselves focused on the next thing, right? Like, what is the next thing we can fix? I mean. You know, I got a list wow. going of things that we, we, I love in Sherbine right now, right? We just we're, rolled it out with you guys. It's fantastic. Uh, we rolled it out maybe four or five months ago, but yep. I have I have a list of things that I want to fix already, mm-hmm. things I want to improve yep. on, things I want to get better. And it's just a step by step. I tell people all the time this because I think the world is so enamored with getting better. 
but but yeah. people don't realize look perfection or not perfection excuse me uh, uh you know it's uh getting better is a one step at a time process wisdom yeah. right is being able to see 50 steps down the road what do i want it to look like uh and vision but at the same time you have to take all 50 steps in order to get there and you can't you can't you know you can't turn to the left or the right you can't take pauses it's just continual slow improvement because when you do that you're going to look back in two to three years and you're not even going to realize all the change you made because it's just consistent is discipline is really what it comes down to at the end of the day yeah that's that's so powerful you know uh, do you see that resonates with your personal challenge as well that you know hey if i need to keep the balance it is not just it's you know it's it's across yeah you know i i do i i think i think across the board uh you know there's times where you know maybe maybe work gets a little bit heavier maybe you know personal life gets a little bit heavy right uh you know being able to balance both of those things uh it really does create a good synergy and and i think that's when when people say you know you're firing on all cinder, cylinders or you're working really hard and you're like you have a great day today well why because probably everything lined up with your expectations so mentally you had a good day right so it's always about resetting those expectations for where am I now where do I want to be and, and you know having the discipline it takes to make change and to achieve those things interesting so what would you advise you know so the uh, the small agency owners or the aspiring CEOs or you know who are buying agencies as well you know who look up to you you know there are several of them you know listen to your podcast or listen to several of the you know you guys were just featured you know congratulations for you being featured on the on the magazine premiere oh, thank you. um right uh, so so what would you what would be your advice to them and how to get there because it's a mental process right you know what you're talking about is not just a, just the agency's growth it's the mental grind to get to this point yeah, you know, I think you have to stay grounded on what you believe. Um, you know, that's that's the biggest thing for us is is we work, you know, people always talk about culture. And, and I really think that cultures and companies are, are you know, they're frustrated or they're, they're stressed out sometimes for really one of three reasons. Either the employee, the owner doesn't care about the employees, the employees don't care about the owner, or they both care about each other and they just don't communicate it very well. And so we always try to communicate uh, our values to our people, because if they know what kind of value system that we're all working under, it makes life easier. It makes those small decisions. Hey, my kid's sick. Can I take off today? Or, or yes, of course you can, because family out, you know, Trump's work. Right. So having those things already pre-decided, yep. it really allows us to come to work with one focus and mission in mind, which is to win to take care of more clients mm -hmm. to win and go after it. and so i think you know my advice to other people in this business is just you know there there's so much good going on don't be so stuck in mm -hmm. this is the way we've always done it mode right find ways to get better um there's a lot of people out there who are who are helping lead innovation forward but also at the same time don't be willing to forego your values because you want to innovate, right? Uh, innovation needs to fit alongside with your values because then that way it's sustainable. I mean, yeah, you can innovate for a little while outside of your value system, but it's gonna crumble at some point because you're gonna come to that road where it's gonna split and you're gonna have to make a decision. And, and that's where those things usually go wrong. So making sure everything stacks on top of your values is a really big deal and not being afraid to stand up for them too. No, that's that's a very good point. Thanks, thanks for sharing. No, I th I think you know every time you emphasizing on you know how important it is to have that fun the foundation the fundamentals being very clear and aligning that with the discipline of making sure uh, we deliver on whatever we are set setting our goals to. I, again, I think that's that's pure pure gold. So let's talk about uh, talk to us about your people process technology and how do you bring it together as you were earlier kind of alluding to so want to double click on that yeah absolutely so uh most important thing in our in our company is our people um you know the people that that work here um our our, our uh, employees and our, our our agents um you know with without them we would not be able to reach or have the impact that we have uh, across the the united states right and so that's the first thing second thing is is clients uh, we do not use the word customer here. I don't have one customer in my book of business. I got a lot of clients, but uh, we do not have customer. If you don't know the difference, hit me up on LinkedIn. I would be more than happy to to chat about that. That's there's a big difference okay. in the two of those. And our any industry, in my opinion, 
use the word customer too heavily, specifically those industries that actually have clients and they just don't even know it. So it starts with how we, how we, how we say those things. Um, but yeah, technology and how that fits in. I mean, look, technology is never going to replace anybody that works in at Rello Insurance. But what technologies are going to do is they're going to help the people who work here. So that way the people who work here can elevate the client experience for the, for the mm -hmm. clients that we serve, right? So any technology needs to serve to help us enhance those client experiences. Um, so that's how we, that's how we review every technology. Does this technology mm -hmm. create a more efficient system where our people can spend more time with our clients, not less, and really enhance that client experience? If, if, if everything that an account manager is doing uh, can be replaced with technology, that account manager is not being replaced. That account manager is then being leveraged by calling their clients instead of emailing them. Or instead of texting the clients, they're picking up the phone or they're going out to chamber events and they're showing their face in the community. And they're, you know, that that's the things that we care about is how do we build the client experience? And technology is a great tool to take care of a lot of those back end things that are monotonous that people don't enjoy anyways, allowing us to focus more uh, on our communities and on our clients. I, I think you mentioned it right. And how, again, I think one of the variations of how we look at it is to say, you know, there are two kinds of work. You know, there is high value work and there is a low value work. Low value work, you can always automate. And the high value work is what you need to customize, which is where your people come in. Identifying the difference between those two, you know, you will be able to leverage your people and your technology well. Absolutely. No, absolutely. And, and I think that's I always use this uh, phrase with our people internally, but every technology we work with, it serves one purpose. It serves the purpose of enhancing the client experience. If it doesn't do yep. that, it's, it's not a technology we need. So every technology we, we view through that lens of our values are this, we are a relationship based company. Relationships here always matter. And so how do we build those relationships using technology, processes like you mentioned processes but just even having a process typed out that's consistent that we can follow those things all enhance that client experience because at the end of the day that's that's what we're here to do we're here to serve our clients and to take care of their needs with the insurance you know in mind sure so now take that technology and process of one step further and let's talk about data mm -hmm. how important is data and what are some of the key metrics that you look at yeah, it's super important. Uh, I would say that 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 you know that's probably one of my biggest challenges. I, I I like the sell side. I like the people. I like the you know the relationships. But sometimes following up and and I think the hard thing about it is data. There's so much of it. So measuring what do you measure and and, and where do you review and and what are you looking at? You know, you can quickly get to the point where you're just you know you're in data overload. And you really aren't looking at anything and every you're looking at everything and therefore, you know, nothing matters. So it, it's a matter of, of focusing on the important things. So the things we focus on, are, you know, are like policies per client, um, you know, total revenue, total retention, uh, you know, those kind of things. We, we measure all of that. Uh, and, and for us, it's about explaining that process because, you know, our industry as automated as it's working to become, it's still very manual. And so it means, you know, in, in order for my metrics to be exactly correct, everybody's got to do their job from the front desk, getting the mail to an account manager for that account manager, entering in that claim for the agent communicating with the adjuster and the adjuster, you know, communicating the close of the claim and the claim being closed. All of those things have to happen for me to even see that there was a claim and the result of that claim, right? And that's just one point. And if we have, you know, thousands of those things happening every single month, we can get, you know, we can get, uh, data can get off very quickly. Yeah. So we have to focus on the why to every single thing that we do, every process we follow, because that's the only way we can really ensure that our data is going to be accurate. Mm -hmm. So, again, this may be a very broad and a vague question, but, you know, hey, there is just three data points that you would care the most. What would those be? Oh, man. Uh, let's see. I don't know. It's Monday morning, so I'm probably focusing on new business, uh, well, cancellations, that's... and book of business, right? If I'm looking at it just because yeah. that's what hits my inbox every single Monday for, for the last week. So I would say those three things because those three things tell you the health. I, I, I will tell you this. I, I would say if I'm looking, zooming out, probably actually the biggest three things I care about. I care about, um, I care about my book of business. I care about my new business, and I care about my policies per client because I think uh, if you're reviewing those three things consistently, um, 
you know, retention is built into that number technically because I'm, my policies per client should increase, not decrease, right, with the pro- proper amount of cross-selling and retention. And so those three things really tell me, uh, is my book of business growing organically, inorganically? Uh, where is it growing? Where is it decreasing? So that's kind of the things that I would say probably the most important to me uh, day in and day out. And I hope insured money is helping uh track some of those so i don't yeah, want to man, talk absolutely. much about insured right <laughs> yeah it's doing a great job anybody who doesn't have it give me a call you know i, I told tucker the other day i'm your main salesman like i said I, I i always told him i think we agreed like me and him might we might be equal in terms of sales skills and ability but i uh, i love you guys and working with y'all so i would love to to help anybody out that has any questions about it so oh, i know you, you won't give thank yourself you. the plug but i definitely will so uh, thank you no that's one of my rule is i on this podcast you know it's very clear in my head that i the one thing I don't want to talk about is insured mind, you know, yep. it just somehow is just out of my line of thinking. Hey, I, I'm with you. I run my own podcast and I barely talk about our company. So I definitely so, understand. So. All right. All right. So as we are getting to the close of this, let's talk a couple quick, uh, quick questions, you know. All right. Um, start with end in mind. What does this look like? You know, five years, 10 years, 20 years or shorter, longer. What, what does this Yep. So uh, I will tell you the same thing I pretty much tell everybody when I'm asked this question. I have goals. I have things that I would like to achieve, but I want to grow one good person, one good office, one good community at a time. Uh, we are wow. looking for the right kind of people. If that means we end the year at 62 offices in six states, guess what? I'm happy because I know that's where we need to be. Uh, I got a team that is focused. I got an agency, right? That is focused on getting better, innovating, developing, and growing. So if we don't grow, what that tells me is we didn't need to. So it's all about finding the right kind of people when we bring, I'm not, we're not trying to grow just to get to a certain number or size. We're trying to bring on the right people who fit our values, who fit our culture, who fit our, our, uh, our, our, um, you know, what we feel like we're the best at, which is being local, our model. And when they do that, we're going to grow, we're going to get better. So if that means we're at 75 offices at the end of this year, or if we're at hundred or if we're at 62 or it doesn't matter to me, it's, it's one good office, one good person at a time. That's how we're going to grow. And that's a very powerful statement. I appreciate that. So talk to me about, you know, again, you talk so much sense, so much wisdom, so much clarity, you know, what, who has helped you the most as a mentor or, you know, somebody to get you here? Yeah, I mean that's that's pretty easy, man. That's that's my dad. That's Jason. He's our CEO. Um, you know, we, he he's trusting me way way too much. I mean, like I said, I was 22 years old leading our sales team. I'm 24 years old leading the agency, uh, and, and a lot of the the clarity that I think maybe comes across, you know, that you just mentioned, it comes from him really pushing and poking holes. Uh, we do, we do personality tests. We do we do some of the simple ones around here. His personality test. He's like a a debater, like a type A debater. So it does not matter if he thinks the idea that I come up with or that someone else comes up with is the best idea. He's going to act like he hates it and debate you about it. And it really That's makes good. you, it is, it's yeah. great actually. Yeah. And, and it really makes us focus in and, and, and have a reason behind everything that we do. And so I think that um, that has been, he's been my biggest mentor uh, just all around life, business, nice. uh, being a husband, being a better father. I mean, he, he's where a lot of that comes from. I mean, I'll tell you, you know, uh, my father-in-law, he's a very successful architect up in the DFW area. Uh, I, I bounce a lot of ideas off of him and he gives me a lot of advice. It's fun because I have some of these guys who are not at the end of their career, but they're they're later in their career, right? Like I have the energy and the fire to work on Saturday night at 10 p.m. And, you know, they're like, yep. hey, there'll come a day where you don't do that anymore, right? And, and it's, so it's fun to see some of the wisdom that's shared uh, yeah. just with experience, things that I don't yep. have yet. Uh, and then beyond that too, my, my C-suite team. I got a fantastic yeah. sweet C-suite team here who pushes me and challenges me every day. Uh, and I will tell you this, I'm still one of our younger employees in the whole agency. Out of 200 plus, I'm one of the younger ones. So basically every single person in this company uh, has been a great mentor to me because they have experience in areas I don't. And, and I don't take that for granted. And so a lot of times they'll say things um, and I and I sit there and I think about a lot of things. Then when things don't make sense to me, I just sit there and I'll chew on them, man. And, and the reason is because I know that there's a reason that someone said something, even if it doesn't make sense to me yet. So I'm trying to connect the dots to get to where their line of thinking is. And a lot of time, that's what helped. That's what's helped challenge me on, hey, maybe maybe I'm just not old enough yet or I haven't seen enough yet or I'm not experienced enough yet to to identify something 
Uh, and, and wisdom is, you know, being able to see the end before you start something. And so, uh, you know, a lot of people uh, here in this company, they come from rich backgrounds, all kinds of insurance backgrounds, all kind of business and sales backgrounds. And so taking that advice and really, uh, you know, using that to develop has been really, really big for me personally, for sure. And I really appreciate how you humble yourself, you know, of that, hey, whatever I have is great, but you know how you are willing to absorb all these learning. You know, this tells me nothing, but you know how bright your life and your career is ahead of you. So, you know, this is fantastic. So we'll see. Congratulations I, uh... for, for all this uh, learnings and all this, uh, you know, teachings that you have got, you know, and I'm so proud of your relation with your dad. You know, that is something we always don't see all the time. And, and so when we see that, you know, I, I have a great relation with my father. So when I hear otherwise, you know, it pains me occasionally when I see other people. So, but, but, you know, it's fantastic relation to continue and no better mentor than your own father, you know, so congratulations. Yeah. Thank you, man. Like I said, I, I thank God every day for it. It's, you know, I, I've been put in, I tell people all the time, I've been put in too good of a position, uh, you know, for, for what I really deserve. And, and I will tell you, I'm going to play that little clip of what you just said about me being humble and listening to my wife. Cause I don't know if she always <laughs> believes it. So, <laughs> so uh, I'm showing Kate that one for uh, sure. Uh, well, uh, we will not be friends with her. You know, she's just rush and is just telling about you all the time. <laughs> all right. I got a couple more quick ones. So networks association, what events or organizations or connection, um, any, Man. any in particular? No, not necessarily. Not, not nothing in, in, in real particular. You know, I, I'm big on networking. I will say I told my wife this the other day. I think LinkedIn has been absolutely phenomenal. Uh, yeah. it, you know, I, I know that that uh, being able to network with people that are beyond just the scope of, you know, any conference I can attend, I might only meet 10 to 15 people. But on LinkedIn, I yeah. can meet, you know, 15 a day. Right. So it's just it's fantastic. Nothing, nothing necessarily in particular. But as far as networking you know, as a whole. Love it. I think it's a big deal mm -hmm. to build out your personal network because even if it's things that, you know, we're not going to work together in business, there's lessons to be learned from everybody you interact with. Um, any insurance specific network that you are big on anything? No, not necessarily. Like I said, just kind of, kind of all over the board. I mean, we, you know, we're, okay. we're part of basically most of the, the, the insurance ones and, you know, some of the other sales ones and stuff, but nothing, nothing in particular. They're, they all have their purpose. They all do a good job for helping out. So. No, this is fantastic, man. You know, I, I wish, you know, we can continue this for, you know, another 30 minutes, 45 minutes. You know, this can just continue conversation. You know, I have enjoyed this thoroughly. So I really appreciate Jackson for sharing your thoughts, your personal life, your your journey, your challenges, you know, and, and what, a, what a beautiful future you have painted for yourself, you know, so I cannot be but just excited. So thank you for joining me and thank you for sharing all of that with me today. Hey, man, I really appreciate you. You know that I appreciate this podcast and the opportunity to share my story and, uh, you know, really, really appreciate it. Thank you very much for having me. Thank you.